Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm talking about the episode from season two, The Fawn, written by John McGreevy and directed by Ralph Waite. This was Ralph's first episode directing The Waltons, and what a way to dive in. Animals, <laughs> lots of kids, <laughs> but Ralph was very much up to the challenge. Early on, uh, we begin to get a sense of Ralph's style as a director, the kinds of shots he liked to choose to set up, and also the way he liked to imbue real life situations and action into his scenes. Early on, we see there is some sort of an interesting wrestling match going on at the school. Uh, looks like a little the type of game I sometimes played in pools where, you know, you try and knock somebody off of somebody else's back. <laughs> there were two storylines in this episode, both revolving around Erin. One was her budding romantic interest with Harold Beasley, a young boy from school. Uh, and then also Mary's storyline, finding a young motherless fawn and wanting to take it home and keep it. This is what Mary remembers about filming the fawn. This is from the book, Good Night John Boy by Earl Hamner. Ralph Waite directed this one. I remember it was his first time to direct the show. What I remember even more is that it was the first time I had to kiss a boy on screen. I was really very inexperienced and I was horrified but it was just the beginning. For some reason, the writers wrote in kissing scenes for me in just about every other show. <laughs> so many beginnings in this episode. You see Mary Ellen giving Erin advice and helping her throughout this episode. In this case, uh, Mama encourages Mary Ellen in some cases to sort of try and help Erin, but Mary Ellen does just initiate some conversations, including some advice about how to deal with Harold and that uh, she shouldn't sit around and wait for him, but should make him come to her. Sage advice indeed. As we're all traipsing through the woods to go collect berries, we did a lot of berry collecting, it seems. <laughs> anyway, we are singing all together, which is kind of fun. Hey, I'm guessing, we're singing The Bear Went Over the Mountain. I'm guessing this was in the public domain, so it was not a problem. They didn't have to deal with royalties. The other storyline in this episode dealt with John Boy. Uh, Graham Foster, the children find out that uh, a family has been evicted for not paying their taxes and that there is a man, Graham Foster, who has been buying up properties for the back taxes and kicking people out and overcharging for rents. He's looking for a new rent collector, and John Boy decides that he will go after this job. He convinces Graham to hire him despite being so young. Uh, Graham seems to be interested in John Boy because he is John Walton's son. When John Boy goes back to tell uh, Daddy and Grandpa that he's been hired, John says he wishes John Boy had spoken to him first because Graham has a grudge against John because he and Grandpa testified against him at one point for, you know, abuse and of power and various different things related to um, business dealings. So they said he was shady in his business dealings and not to be trusted. But John basically says to John Boy, it's up to him. And John Boy says he'd like to give it a try. Ralph was very big on creating a sense of realism. In this case, when he is talking with John Boy at the sawmill, he has sawdust in his hair, which the way sawdust was flying around as they were cutting wood makes perfect sense. But uh, it wasn't something that I remember seeing on a regular basis with Ralph when he was working in the sawmill. But here, I'm sure this was Ralph's idea. While in the woods, Aaron comes across this this young fawn, and she's able to pretty much walk right up to it. I never particularly thought about, you know, deer as being able to be tamed, but clearly this one was tame enough for us all to be able to work with it during the episode and tended to not just run off, which is pretty amazing. So in this case, she walks right up to it and is able to pet it and gather it in so that she can take it home. We all did get to interact with this fawn, which was a lot of fun. A very sweet little animal. Uh, in this case, Erin is uh, taking care of it and she has decided to name it Lancelot after the character in Camelot. 
Uh, she's in a romantic phase where she writes a note to Harold calling him her brave knight. Uh, so this is a, an extension of that theme. I love the way Ralph chose to shoot this scene. He is under the truck working on it and the kids are heading off to school and you just keep seeing legs and feet go by and all of a sudden you see four legs go by with a bell around it and of course uh, then Daddy says to Aaron, no, the deer is not going to school. And then you see the, the deer go back the other direction. So just a really clever, cute shot choice. As John Boy starts trying to collect these rents, he runs into different experiences. In one case, uh, he is trying to get the rent. The gentleman doesn't have the full amount. He gives him part of it, partially because he says he feels that the rent is too high for the property and the time period in, here in the Depression, and also because there are things that need repairs. Uh, John Boy takes the partial rent. He sees another woman who says that her roof has been leaking for ages and uh, Graham Foster is not repairing it. So he's a very, uh, he's a, you know, he's not a good landlord. He is uh, not taking care of the properties and he's all about the money. Uh, so this is creating a bit of a dilemma for John Boy. The game warden, Mr. Hennessy, comes by because he's heard that Aaron has this Vaughn, and he basically tells her it is illegal to keep a wild animal, you know, in, uh, in the home, in the barn, and it must be released back into the wild, and Aaron is just crushed by this news. The interior of the barn was always shot in the actual interior of the barn on the back lot of Warner Brothers, so the set was big enough for them to get cameras in and do everything they needed to, and Ralph made good use of that location and his various different shot choices. In this case, I love this long shot of Michael and Mary in the barn. It, then a lot of the scene is played just from this long shot. And then a little bit later, you see another very cute shot through the boards of the barn. And you see all the kids just sort of looking at Aaron and, and the fawn. And, and then they turn and then the camera comes to the other side of that fence. In trying to make Aaron feel better, Jim Bob and Elizabeth decide that they will go and get her a potential substitute pet and get this rather large frog for her. <laughs> uh, the character of Aaron, she advocates very strongly for this fawn throughout the episode and really wants what's best for it and feels very deeply about what's happening. And this was a characteristic that I have found with Mary in real life uh, always, is that she feels things very deeply and feels very strongly about things and advocates with all her heart for important issues. Meanwhile, John Boy goes back to deliver the rent that he has collected to Mr. Foster. He explains that some people didn't have the money, felt the, that the rents were too high, and in some cases repairs were needed, and he really thinks that Mr. Foster is gonna take this to heart. Mr. Foster is annoyed with him because he didn't collect all the rent, says he's not paying John Boy his commission, and that he better get the rest of the rent. John Boy now has to decide what he's going to do. He goes back to Daddy and says, you're right, and basically I've been fired. Uh, but then John Boy gets another idea. Erin wakes up from a dream where she believes something is wrong with Lance, her, her young fawn, and she talks Daddy into going out, and, and she and Daddy and Mr. Hennessy, the game warden, go out to try and find Lance and make sure he's okay. They come across poachers, and in fact, the poachers do take a shot at young Lance. Uh, fortunately, he is only grazed. Uh, so in which case, I guess when Mary first ran up to the fawn, I was like, wow, this fawn doesn't seem very injured. He just ran right off. Uh, but then they say that he was only grazed. Another cool shot choice as we see John Boy through the window, the back window of the truck uh, as he and John are talking and John Boy now has an idea about what he's going to do about Mr. Foster. So he, he borrows the truck and Jason and the two of them go and do some of these repairs. They go out to repair that roof and I think it's really cute that as John Boy is talking with the, the lady that Jason keeps going back and forth between the two of them and each time he goes through he goes excuse me excuse me excuse me but he goes back and forth three or four times so just 
again, a cute choice that Ralph made there of how he staged the scene. John Boy takes the remaining rent that he has collected to deliver to Mr. Foster, but he has deducted the cost of the materials for repairing the roof as well as his own commission. So in the end, although John Boy says he won't work for Mr. Foster anymore, despite being given an offer for a second chance, John Boy does, he's learned a lesson and he's come out on top in spite of it all. Mr. Hennessy gives Aaron the choice of having Lance turned loose in a game park, like a protected area where Lance would not be shot at, uh, he would be pampered, and Aaron thinks at first that would be great because Lance will be safe. She has a conversation with Grandpa who isn't so sure and feels that although he will be safe, he will never have certain joys of being free and the danger and the excitement and finding his own mate and all of those things, feeling that sometimes wild things need to be allowed to be wild and to live their life, whatever it is, however long it is, free and able to make their own choices. This is a bit of a dilemma for Erin. She tries to get other people to tell her what she should do. And basically everyone sort of says, it's up to you. When the game warden does return, Aaron has decided that she wants Lance to be free and to be set free in the wild, but she wants to do it herself. So she takes Lance up into the woods and says her goodbyes to him and makes him go away. As she's very upset and starting to walk home, Harold Beasley appears, gives her flowers, and Aaron has a new focus for the moment. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. I will be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.